Hey, I'm Gold and I have updates to 23 of my DC tiles. That sounds like a lot. Um, don't worry, for the most part it's just the same two changes to like all of them. Just to unify how they work and look and function, but there's like two new DC tiles and then there are big updates to the split tones and the saturation shaper and just there's timestamps down below, skip to the part you're interested in, and let's head over to the Mitchell Resolve. So the first new tool is called Anchored Hue Rotate. It's pretty much a combination of two existing tools, those being the Primaries Panel Hue and Offset. So if I open up to DC Till, by default it's highlighting the anchor point which you can set from Hue Anchor, Set Anchor and Loom or Luminance Anchor. This is the color you want to keep put. So for example, let's try to select the skin tones in this Isabella image and then I'll disable Highlight Anchor. Now, when I start twisting the Hue Rotate slider, what you'll see is that everything else in the image gets rotated but the skin tones stay put. And if I disable and enable the anchor, you can see the anchor is really the automatic offset that is being applied. So it is not applied uniformly, as the clean neutral slider keeps whites, blacks and greys from being tinted by the offset. The next new tool is the Gamut Manipulator version 2.1. If you've been keeping track, uh, then I do already have a Gamut Manipulator tool. But that one was one of the first DC tools actually made, about six or seven months ago. And well, it wasn't the easiest to use. So with this one, I've remade the whole tool to be much more simpler, but also provide some new features. If you're interested in getting the old one, it is still included when you buy the Gamut Manipulator, but this new version will be the one I'll be updating from now on. So starting from the top, the first six sliders are a HSL qualifier. So you can choose a hue target, let's for example try to select these leaves, and you can change the hue target width. So let's not try to have any of the skins included. There we go. And then by default, the saturation and luminance qualifiers, their width is set to 1, basically disabling them. So if I bring down the saturation, and then I can qualify with that a bit, and I can do the same with the luminance target. Bring the width down, try to find the midpoint of the luminances, and then bring it back up. And do keep in mind that these qualifiers, unlike the built-in ones to resolve are based on bell curves, also known as Gaussian curves, meaning that they are extremely soft. And in addition to the HSL part of the tool, we can also use clean neutrals, as you can see, to clean up some of the neutral colors, which can appear in the selection. Once I'm happy with the selection I've made, I can deselect highlight selection. And now we can get on to modifying it with all these different tools. We have Hue Shift, which simply rotates the hue. Then Saturation Shift, which is the more classical type of saturation. Though I personally prefer Subtractive Saturation, which also makes more saturated colors darker. Then we have Luminance Shift, which is the classical luminance we have. But in addition, we have Exposure Shift, which is a different kind of luminance that is in stops of light. And finally, we have density shift, which makes more saturated colors darker. As you can see, even though I've made quite big changes, the image overall has not broken. There are no sudden shifts in hue, luminance or saturation as all of the qualifications are very, very soft. Finally, I have also included the possibility to invert any of the qualifiers. So we have invert hue, invert saturation, 
and invert luminance. Through showcasing this tool, I've also shown the two main changes to all of my DC tilt. Those being the way I highlight selections and targets, where before, if I open up, for example, the gamut shaper, I showed your selection on black, where the colors that were selected were shown as they are, and colors that were not selected were shown as black. Now the problem lies in that if you had very dark or black pixels in your selection, you couldn't really tell because everything that wasn't selected was also black. Now in the new version, all selections are shown on a checkerboard pattern, which makes it much easier to see how much something is selected. And in most tools, you still have the matte mode, which is a black and white matte of the selection. And the second change in all of my DC tools is unifying the name for this thing that I call transfer function. This is what Resolve calls gamma, but if we want to be technically correct, then gamma is only one of many different transfer functions that can be applied. Moving on to color crosstalk, I have added a sat mix or saturation mix slider and a preserve sat checkbox. If I quickly make a look with the color crosstalk, if I check the preserve sat, what you can see is that all colors that lost some saturation in the process of applying color crosstalk now get that saturation back. And the sat mix slider does the exact same thing, except it's a slider. Then I have increased the maximum contrast of both of my contrast tools, where contrast version 2.6 has a maximum contrast of 3 instead of 2, and filmic contrast version 1.2.2 has a maximum contrast value of 4 instead of 2. Saturation Shaper version 1.3.2 has new desaturate blacks and highlight sliders with a desat curve checkbox to show what's actually happening. This is useful for keeping your blacks neutral and your highlights also less saturated. And last but not least, the four split tone tools now all have a blend setting, which if I show the curve and add some quick split toning, you can see that the blend slider is just a multiplier for any changes the split tone already makes. I have also simplified the neutrals section of the tool, which allows you to neutralize blacks whites and a pivot point, where before I had separate strength and width sliders, now you can only control the width of the neutral area. Hue S curve split tone now has a 180 degree hue lock checkbox, which enabling locks the low hue selection to being the opposite of 180 degrees to the high selection. This means that your split tone uses complementary colors. Well, there you go. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comments or write to me at support at carh.com. If you want to try this stuff out before buying it, you can download the demo pack, also linked down in the description, which has everything except with a watermark. So you can try it out on your own footage. If you have already bought a DC till, which I have updated, then you can use the same original download link to get the update. And if you have bought the whole pack, then you will also receive the two new DC tills for free. Well, see you next time.